don't apply. Yet the field of X-ray astronomy no longer represents the cosmic frontier. The really exciting, cutting-edge research, according to some scientists, is being done with gamma rays. Thirty years ago, before anyone had tried it, gamma ray astronomy was thought to be a non-starter. Gamma radiation is so extremely energetic, it's difficult to produce with any process short of catastrophic nuclear reactions. And after all, nature doesn't go in much for catastrophic nuclear reactions, or at least that's what we used to think. They're very different process that makes gamma rays compared to process that makes most other electromagnetic radiation. Gamma rays are made with non-thermal processes, usually. That means, for instance, with x-rays and optical emission, we're looking at heat coming off. We're looking at light coming from hot objects. But when we get to the gamma rays, it's really quite different. Gamma rays are produced by particles colliding with each other, by antimatter that uh, annihilates with matter and produces gamma rays. With things that are interacting and, and violent processes in physics, it's very different from the thermal universe that we see in, in other wavelengths. Although they work in the youngest and most extreme branch of astronomy, gamma ray astronomers have already had their own space telescope. It flew in the 1990s, and in the tradition of space astronomy, it was named after a pioneering scientist, in this case, Arthur H. Compton. Compton was an American physicist who helped explain many of the strange ways in which matter interacts with high energy radiation. And he won a Nobel Prize for his efforts. So the name Compton was appropriate. Neither the man nor the spacecraft could be described as a lightweight. Launched in April 1991, the 15-ton Compton Gamma Ray Observatory was the largest payload ever carried by the space shuttle. Compton employed four massive detectors the size of compact cars to observe the penetrating gamma rays. The observatory remained operational in Earth orbit for nine years, and it worked flawlessly. But even with Compton, astronomers haven't found a way to form clear, detailed images from gamma rays. This makes it a challenge to understand the sources that are being discovered. It's bizarre. The objects that we see are, in some cases, not known at any other frequency. In some cases, they're not known even now that we've seen them in gamma rays. We really don't understand what they are. It was the late 1970s. The Cold War was in full swing. High above Earth, orbiting satellites stared downwards, searching for the flash of gamma radiation that would signal the detonation of a nuclear weapon there was something wrong. The satellites kept picking up gamma ray flashes, but they weren't coming from nuclear blasts on Earth. They came from behind the spacecraft, away from the planet. It was as though Mother Nature was conducting weapons tests somewhere out in space. Over the next 20 years, astronomers learned that one or two bright, brief flashes of gamma radiation could be expected every day. We've given a name to the mystery objects that produce these flashes. We call them gamma ray bursters, or simply GRBs. One of the four instruments on the Compton Observatory was built specifically to look at the distribution of gamma ray bursts on the sky, to see where the different flashes of gamma rays were coming from, and make maps on the sky of where they were. And from those maps, we are able to see that the gamma ray burst sources were not along the Milky Way plane, but were distributed uniformly over the sky. And that was our first hint that they were, the sources were located at great distances. The astronomers found this troubling. It takes so much energy to make gamma rays that it was a challenge to explain how stars in our galaxy might produce even the occasional gamma ray burst. But if the GRBs live beyond the Milky Way, then they aren't thousands of light years away, but billions. To be that far away, and yet seem as bright as they do, these explosions, or whatever they are, must involve 
absolutely stunning amounts of energy. One way to put this in context is to think of the energy released in these gamma ray bursts in terms of our own sun's energy. So the, the energy that comes out in a gamma ray burst is, is equal to the light coming out from our, from our sun during its whole lifetime, concentrated in just to a few seconds. It seemed so unlikely that at first many astronomers thought it was all a mistake. If they could only catch one of these mystery objects in some other wavelength range, they might be able to learn how far away it was. The breakthrough came when a joint Italian-Dutch satellite was placed in orbit with both X-ray and gamma-ray telescopes aboard. It had much higher positional accuracy and a far faster response time than anything previously launched, and the combination paid off. February 28th, 1997, a gamma ray burst was detected in the constellation Orion. The orbiting X-ray telescope swiftly focused on the GRB and recorded an afterglow of X-rays that lasted for hours. An emergency call went out to the optical astronomers and the observatory best positioned to follow up on the news was the four meter William Herschel telescope on La Palma in the Canary Islands. This time, they saw something. There was only a faint glow, and it faded quickly, but it told a remarkable story. One of the things we saw from the very first optical images, all you need is one optical image to teach you a lot. Uh, you know, an image is worth a, a thousand words. We saw that the bursts were positioned on top of external distant galaxies. That was the proof that these objects that make gamma ray bursts are in distant galaxies, external galaxies, and very far away from us out in the distant universe. This makes GRBs harder to explain, but even more astronomically important. Gamma ray bursts appear to be the most violent events in the universe since the Big Bang. Whatever is going on out there, it's something that can make a supernova look like a campfire. Perhaps if two neutron stars collide head on, there would be a titanic flash of gamma radiation as the pair turned into a black hole. Or maybe there are fireworks on a cosmic scale when two black holes merge into one. It stretches our imaginations to the limit to account for so much energy. Gamma ray bursts are actually the signature of black hole birth. And the reason that these stars, when they end their lifetime, make a gamma ray burst as compared to a, a supernova explosion is because those are the particular very massive stars that end their life by imploding instantaneously into a black hole. This is a very popular theory right now. The theory may be popular, but it's not what scientists call tightly constrained. That means it's not much more at this stage than an informed guess. But the cosmic mysteries don't end with GRBs. Although gamma rays are the highest energy form of radiation we know, there are things of even higher energy that rain down on us from space. Planet Earth is under attack. A steady rain of cosmic rays is bombarding our world 